Firefly Mountain, written by Patricia Thomas, illustrated by Peter Silvada. The whole long yellow afternoon the sun boiled down so hot the heat squiggled up in waves from the meadow. The sweet dry smell of clover hay floated over to where the oaks dropped fat, round shadows. Bob White's whistled out beyond the fence row. Bob White, Bob, Bob White! Mama brought out a big jug of lemonade and set it down in the shadows. Maybe tonight we'll see a firefly mountain, she said. Papa took a long drink of the lemonade. Maybe, when it's dark. I wasn't sure what a firefly mountain was. I didn't think I'd seen one before. Not even when I was little. Last summer. Orange and black monarch butterflies danced over to see about the lemonade. I took a long drink of it, too, and, on purpose, let water drops from the jug make a cool little river down my neck. I half-wished the yellow afternoon would go on and on, filled with clover smell and lemonade and butterflies and bobwhite whistles. But then I half-wished it would hurry and end, so I could see the Firefly Mountain. It doesn't matter which way you wish, though. It takes just as long as it takes to turn a yellow afternoon into a purple evening. So after a while, when the heat squiggles disappeared down into the daisies and meadow grass, Mama called, Best come in for supper now. A whisper of a breeze came through the screen door and tugged at the kitchen curtains while we ate. I helped Mama clear the table, and my brother helped wash the dishes, which he almost never does, so we'd be done faster. An orange ball of a sun dipped down behind the orchard, painting the sky pink and red behind it. One sleepy Bob White whistled out his name, so we wouldn't forget it, I guess. Then he went to bed. Is it time for a firefly mountain? I asked. Not quite, Papa said. The barn swallows came out and danced their evening dance, flying so high they were almost out of sight, then diving down so straight and fast you'd think they'd leave holes in the air. Is it time? I asked. But Papa said, wait a bit. Up above where the swallows danced, I saw a shimmery star wink out, and I wished on it. Like Papa said, you never knew when a wish was just waiting to come true. Tonight, I wished I could see a firefly mountain, but Papa still said, wait a bit. Before long, the barn and the house and the orchard melted into black shapes in the black dark around us. Then... We saw them. The fireflies. First one, then two, then a half dozen or so. Blink, 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 blink. Down low in the grass, higher up in the bushes, higher yet into the oaks. Now, I asked. Now. Papa took my hand and held it tight. We started out through the black, past the barn, through the orchard. I could feel my brother behind me and Mama. I knew they were there, even though I couldn't see them very well. I couldn't really even see my own feet, but I could feel the hard ground of the path under them. And Papa's hand was holding mine, so I walked right along as fast as I could. The dew-wet grass brushed my arms as we climbed the hill beyond the orchard. The fireflies came right along with us. Then we were at the top of the hill where the valley scoops out a hole and the mountain goes up on the other side, a black shape reaching into the black sky. I knew there were trees, butternut and sassafras and tall pointy pines. I knew there were blackberry bushes and milkweed and purple clusters where the monarchs played tag. But you couldn't see any of them in the black, black night. You could only see the black mountain touching the black sky, and all of it, all of it, all of it, lit from top to bottom with blinking, winking, twinkling fireflies. Blink, 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 blink. Too many to count. There must have been a hundred hundred, or maybe a million hundred, or maybe a jillion hundred. I caught my breath and held it. I was almost afraid to let it out and breathe in again, because if I did, I might whoosh it all away. It looked like maybe the stars turned into fireflies and the fireflies turned into stars. I sat down in the dew-wet grass because it was just too beautiful to stand up and watch. I wished I could take a picture of it, but I knew I couldn't. I just have to remember it. I closed my eyes and tried to make the picture in my head so I wouldn't forget.
I don't remember falling asleep. I do remember sort of jiggling and joggling back down the hill with my head on Papa's shoulder and his arms wrapped around me. I remember my brother chattering about falling stars. I remember snuggling down into bed and Mama pulling the covers up under my chin. And I remember that the whole jiggling, joggling way down into bed, I thought I brought the fireflies. The end.